Hello, hello, and welcome. This is Post Hump Day. This is PhD Podcast. I'm Tommy DeSalt. I'm Kellen King. And uh, we got a special guest today. A very special guest. Yeah. Um, so I tell you what, uh, without further ado, Mr. Grady Spencer. Gentlemen, thank you for having me, man. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Honored. I'm honored to be here, man. This has been a long time coming. I don't remember the first time... You DM'd me about this, but it's it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. And mostly it's my fault. So sorry uh, it took so long. No, it's uh I mean, anytime uh, you know, coming in and off uh the road yeah. uh schedule wise, mm-hmm. sure. I'm just happy we could line it up. Really. Dude, I'm Absolutely. stoked to be here, man. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, awesome. We've been, you know, talking about all different topics, uh all different artists, um, but you know, having somebody that uh you know, I can tell you, uh, even when we put a band back together. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah. I don't even know if Kellen remembers this. I but, do. Yeah, I do. Uh, his first statement was, "As long as it's not country." Yeah. <laughs> and sure. I said, "All yeah. right, check there. We're good there. It's not uh, honky tonk." And then next was, um, "I want some stuff like Grady." Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'll take. That, yeah, you're man. a bit. You're a big influence for hey, a lot of the stuff you, that man. we did, and uh, I know. You know, you guys have kind of run into each other here and there. Sure. This is first time you and I have met, but right. I, I've been a big fan of yours for a Dang, long time. Thanks, man. Um, and I just, one of my friends, actually, I was telling some of my buddies, hey, because, you know, you're locally here, a big hero. You know what I mean? Oh, dang. dang. Uh, <laughs> but he was like, hey, I was like, is there anything you guys want me to ask him or anything? He's just like, I just want you to tell him that... Uh, I'm going to play things to do at my funeral. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I got some Dude, tissues. But, uh, that's a first. I thought when you were about to say that, it would be like wedding <laughs> no, or really. like graduation. But I've never, I don't think my music's been played at a funeral yet that <laughs> so I know of. So yeah. you tell him I'm honored. That's, that's yeah. a huge can, honor. But I just, I don't know. I, he, he told me that. So I was just like, I think he would probably appreciate yeah. hearing that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. anyways, I want to hear a little bit about, so. We know, um, I, I know about you because c- of, you know, the music you've made and stuff like that, but I want to know kind of how you started out sure. first, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What made you, uh, tell me, Tony, come tell me that you were in like construction at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Well, even before that, I mean, I grew up, um, there's a little, I don't know where y'all are from exactly. Where are y'all from? Fort Worth. Yeah, we're from, yeah. from Fort Worth. Okay. Yeah. I grew up in a little town called Paducah, Texas, which is kind of literally in the middle of nowhere, um, kind of out towards Lubbock. Yeah. And so, you know, growing up, it was just all top 40 country. Yeah. Alan Jackson, Garth Brooks, you know, and that's just kind of what I grew up on. Well, right. then this, you know, everybody in their high school had the one like, weirdo hipster skate guy yep and this this kid gave me um a copy of jack johnson um which is like the surfer like acoustic guitar guy yep and i was like this is nothing like alan jackson or garth brooks and so that was just (laughs) like that was kind of the start of me understanding like whoa there's a bigger world out here than just like this country music stuff and so started learning how to play jack johnson songs and then Ended up going to Texas Tech out in Lubbock and um, just started writing my own stuff eventually. And then, yeah, I you know I graduated and didn't really have any career lined up, so I just started working on job sites and um, doing commercial HVAC stuff. And uh, you know, worked my way into a really nice career there and and really enjoyed my work. But at the same time, trying to build the music career on the side. And, yeah. Um, finally reached the point to where you know we were we were st- playing enough shows and busy enough that i could step away from the construction side and so did that about three years ago dude that's so i so. gotta ask is because um admittedly i was starting to step out of that scene a little bit yeah um and the time frame sure couldn't have been worse it was bad yeah uh so um if I remember, 2019 is kind of when you mm-hmm. made that that transition into just music. Um, then, you know, the crazy times of COVID came. Um, so as a lot of people that I know were actually looking to pick up day work, Yeah, um, you were kind of doing the opposite. Yeah, well, I, I mean, my wife and I, so I had gotten signed to Red 11, which is a booking agency out of Nashville, um i guess mid 2018 and so they were really cooking and really doing their job of booking enough shows to where we were really busy and so but it reached a point you know my wife and i looked at our budget 
of the bills that we had every month. And then we looked at like the money that was coming in from music and yeah. like, it was very mathematical. And yeah. So when 2020 hit a big chunk of that money was live shows that, yeah. you know, we'd That's averaged crazy. out the past like couple of yeah. years. And, um, but for me, uh, you know, I fully expected to have to go back to construction and, um, I just kind of treated every month as like a, like a high stakes game almost yeah, of yeah. like how do we make mortgage this month and right. so like one month i did a bunch of zoom shows um for people and um one month i printed like posters and sold those and it's just like it was it was kind of a i mean it wasn't fun it, it sucked but it was also kind of nice to just learn new things yeah and like yeah. treat it as a challenge it sounds like you adapted to it a lot obviously. yeah and there were there were times where i'm like okay here comes construction because like yeah. it's getting a little too tight. But we're glad um, you didn't. Yeah, dude, yeah. Well, I probably yeah. would have. I probably would have still, hopefully, ended up back here. But you never yeah. know. Was you the know. Uh, relationship during that time like? It sounds like you guys obviously have a pretty strong relationship, but that it seems like that would test it quite a bit. Would she help? Like you know? Yeah, I think walk to kind of lean on in that sense. She's she's always way smarter than me. Yeah, <laughs> like she she always seems the sees the the picture more fully than yeah. I do. Yeah. I think for me, it's like, oh man, like, I mean, even, even as much as today, like I'm, we're going on a big run next week and, um, I'm like stressing about it and she helps me kind of put it in perspective. Yeah. Like, no, it's going to be fine. Like, Does she go you with you? And stuff like no, that? we've no. got two young kids. So she, right. yeah, she'll stay back. And, um, they actually came to a show yesterday, which was really fun. Um, we played Midlothian, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just fun and and yeah. she's definitely like people joke around but she's definitely the better half and yeah. like helps keep me from going too nuts i know that, that i totally agree with that yeah. yeah sentiment as well like for sure we, girlfriends are probably yeah. smarter than both of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely yeah definitely uh and the, there's the perspective that comes along with it yeah um and the tunnel vision that can come with uh chasing shows in the road i just know from my experience um and that's why it was kind of like for me throughout, I had dropped a single January uh, 2020, was set to go in and do a full record um, that was, you know, all self-funded. Um, and then as the tides kind of turned, um, you know, sometimes uh, for me, I had to take a realistic look at like, okay, what actually makes the most sense? Um, and, and <laughs> you know, things like ROI <laughs> yep. versus just what I want to do. Um, so, uh, props to you for, yeah, for digging in harder. Cause I know a lot of yeah. people that, um, and, and I don't know if you felt it. I felt it a little bit on a more local level that it really was like a reset. Um, it almost leveled things back for some people that had momentum. Yeah. Um, and then someone that was stepping into that yeah. new light really took it and ran. Um, I mean, it, it was interesting times, and I don't want to dwell on it too much. Sure, yeah, I'm sure yeah. you talk about it no, plenty I other. Hear, I do want to hear a little bit about the Zoom sure. like yeah. concerts that you had. Yep. Um, how did that set up? I know that there's places that you can go to and like kind of have like a, a live setup in a sense. Like yeah. we, we've talked about there's one here locally that – you can kind of set up in a studio. How yeah. did that, what did you, how did you do that? Like, um, so it's kind of like what y'all have done here, man. Like it, I, I can tell just from looking around that yeah. y'all have watched a lot of YouTube videos <laughs> and like, have yeah. like figured out how to like do it properly, like with the lights and stuff. Right. Tom and, is big and sound. He's, yeah, dude. And yeah. that, that's kind of what I did of just like, I didn't want to charge people money and it just be my phone. Yeah. And it's like bad sound quality looks yeah. horrible. And so, um, I did research whenever I decided that's what I wanted to try. And, you know, I, I had some decent cameras already and, and just figured out, luckily, like video game streamers, like Twitch people yep. had already like done this all yes. before. Like the they, guinea pigs. Yeah. yeah, they had been doing Dude, it for yes. years. <laughs> and so like I kind of just ripped off a lot of what they were doing and, you know, had a mic kind of like this and um the first couple were really rough. Like I felt bad because like I was like right. you know, scrambling. I, I had to play songs, but I was also freaking out technically. Yeah, that it wasn't going good. But um, yeah, dude, just a lot of YouTube videos and like um, invested in some weird, you know, adapters that kind of right. got everything. Go to your computer and, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. and just just like you said, like the ROI, like 
I did like some of them were really fun. Some of them were like incredibly awkward, you know. And <laughs> yeah, it's you just can't like, really hear applause. Or yeah, anything, and it's like, just feedback. like you can't tell if people are enjoying it. Some people, some people were like making parties out of it, which like yeah, COVID speaking, I'm like no judgment. Y'all do whatever you want to <laughs> do. Like, um, you know, they were they were really drinking and having a good time. But other times it was just like people sitting you know, right in front of the screen. It was just, it was bad, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, now, now I have that tool in my pocket yeah. of like, I know how to do it. Yeah. I don't want to do it regularly now, but I could live stream this show if we wanted yeah. to. And so that's kind of what we we're looking at. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it got weird. I'll tell you, there was like a two week period where, um, Fort Worth opened back up some bars. Um, I had just moved back here from Austin. Yeah. Uh, that time period and <laughs> i remember in the back of my mind i was like oh this is gonna be great because it's gonna be packed i'm gonna have a built-in crowd i'm gonna make some money on this show uh, it was in the stockyards um now what i didn't know is right next door to me was gonna be a pop-up show oh dang and William Clark Green. Was. Oh man, <laughs> that'll do it, man. That's so, never where you want to go head to head. Uh, yeah, I went yeah. from having a packed bar to watching a line through the door of the venue oh, I was playing. Dude, it's the worst. And you know what? I ended up just. I was like, you know what? We're gonna bump this. Yeah, we're gonna play after. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go watch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was just weird. And then uh, you know, you had people with phones and iPads live streaming their yeah. gig. Yeah. Just double dipping on basically doing whatever you could. So, um, yeah, man, much respect for, Dude, for pulling you. out of that. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I don't ever want to go back, but it, it's yeah. just another arrow in the, in the old quiver. And it's just like, just move forward. I yeah. Guess, so. Now that you're, uh, kind of on the road, this is just a random question. Since you have like an HVAC background, you ever look at the little systems? You're like, Bleh. dude, all the time. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, yeah, dude, I can't, I can't not. And like a lot of people have like exposed, you know, it's kind of the move now, yeah, of like not is. having ceilings. And so, yeah, I think my band just has learned to ignore me whenever I start <laughs> commenting. I'm like, dude, like, these people that had no idea what they're doing. That's not up to code. <laughs> like, what is Grady, this? shut yeah, up. <laughs> nobody cares, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. I have yeah. like a little bit of construction background and like just I'm always looking at stuff and I'm like, this is not up to code. This yeah. is not, yeah. Dude, people, yeah, people, it's so funny. Like people could care less, but yeah, it's in me now. Like I, yeah. can't, I can't turn it off. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, talk about being back on the road. Um, I know you were just in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what venue were you at? Um, we played a place, it's, it's called Center Stage. There's three venues in it. Um, they have like a big auditorium, like an upstairs one that's like medium size and then a small room that's called cool. vinyl. And so nice. we're in the small room, which I like. I would rather have a small room that feels more crowded yeah. than a medium or large room that looks empty. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, I think we had, I think it was like 200 people. And so it was like, hell yeah, it was, um, it was fun. And, and, uh, yeah, it was a nice little, nice little honey hole there. Yeah, and then I know you've got dates um, all over, really, coming up um, through, I think I saw Kansas, Nebraska, yeah. Pennsylvania. Yep. Um, really, really out there. Um, I want to know, because I got a taste of it, being on the road with other bands uh, and opening up shows, um, but there was always this different kind of experience I had with shows versus playing here. Uh, when you come back and you play shows here, mm -hmm. um, as you know, the, the name has grown, um, your base has grown. What's that like when you go out and get to come back home? Yeah, I think it's, I think it definitely gives you perspective of, um, you know, I, I grew up in Lubbock before I even moved to Fort Worth, I'd kind of built a following out there. And so when I moved, but I never played outside of Lubbock. So it was just like this nice little bubble that I right. built. But then I moved here. No one knew how it was because I hadn't networked with anybody. Nobody. So I just started from square one and started playing open mics. And um, so that was, you know, almost 12 years ago. And so it was like um, it's reached a point to where we're going out to these other markets, other states. And we have, you know, a handful of people who know who we are. But most people don't know and so we're just kind of just building it up and so it feels good to come back home and um 
you know, just just have that kind of yeah. safety, that warm blanket to kind of know like this is this is where we're known and like um, it's a good base. For it's us, like for yeah, sure. playoff hockey we were talking about earlier, just like coming back home off of like <laughs> yeah. you know, getting it back, getting the mindset back right. I understand that makes sense to me. I want to know how do you start when you are getting into different pockets in different cities? Mm -hmm. How do you? Uh, logistically what how do you know okay now i'm gonna start touring here how sure. do i where do i go from here like yeah luckily and i'm sure it's the same for the podcast stuff but like you can look on spotify yep. and see your markets yeah. and like see where all, your listeners are and so um you know i think our top three are like dallas um denver atlanta so so we can kind of look at that and yeah. like see well if we're gonna gamble let's gamble in these places yeah. and um luckily um like we're going out in a couple of days we're gonna go up to you know um philadelphia pittsburgh um dc but the the way that we're doing that is somebody's hiring us to play a private party and so oh, like yeah. that's a nice little way to go explore new venues venues and, yeah. without a lot of risk <laughs> because you have somebody who's like we're going to make at least a little bit of money no matter yeah. what happens. Right. And anything, any crowd that we get in any other venue is just like the cherry on top. And That's so, cool. Um, we've, I've been really lucky to like meet people who like the band enough to like want to pay, yeah. bring us up to do their private things. And um, it's kind of been really helpful. That's like, that's how we got to play New York City. We got to play um, DC for the first time. That's which was, cool, man. It was like any other way that, the the buyers those venues are probably like no nah, we're good <laughs> you know like, yeah. Wait. Uh, yeah but if you go to offer up there to just play for the door you know that they, they don't care they're like sure yeah, yeah it's, it's already making the, money. the uh, it's great. Yeah. the private show game um is is can be wild yeah um, the first time I remember um um actually I was I was in Amarillo uh, I was playing hoots pub in Amarillo I was opening up for Joey Green and <laughs> I am selling merch and this kind of older cowboy walks up to me and he's like what you doing for Halloween boy <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like uh I don't know probably be in Fort Worth I didn't have anything on the books for Halloween yeah he's like well, why don't you come out to the ranch uh, why don't you come to the ranch? At the ranch. <laughs> and this guy was tanked. I yeah. mean, fucking gone. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you know, you kind of get this guard up against that. Okay, I'm gonna be respectful. He, sure. he like listen, but he's probably not serious. Um, and then he was like, "No, I'm serious." He throws out a number at me that was so outrageous that I really thought he was just. Full yeah, of it. he's not gonna remember this tomorrow. Um, yeah. And then, sure enough, um, I drove out to Spearman America and played a Halloween show on this ranch for the amount he said. Dang, um, dude, no. What was uh, like that? That's a moment that, like, that was the first time that ever. Yeah. Do you recall a moment where it was like, "Wow, this is beyond my expectations"? Right. Like, what yeah. was that first moment? Um. Yeah, the big one. Well, there's been a couple, but. Um, the, the first one was uh, actually the family that's hiring us this coming week is a family called the Bruces. Um, and they live up just north of New York City. And they had heard our music on Spotify and really liked it. And they wanted us to play their daughter's um, high school graduation uh, party, which I was like, that's not our demographic. Yeah. Like <laughs> 17, 18 year old girls. <laughs> Fast forward, dude, like, six months later we're in this like yacht club like just like <laughs> insane like i'm just like what is life right now and they did know our songs like it was it was that's crazy that's it was bizarre and like so like what's happening here and um yeah it, that was crazy and then um a few months back we got to play like a wedding for like a major league baseball player which that's was sick. like in wow. Mal malibu which was like crazy and then now like you know he he like we talked every now and then and he's just a cool dude so that's it's like cool. it's it's bonkers yeah no it, i was just curious because like everybody has like a couple of those moments where it's like all right this is like i knew what i was signing up for i thought yeah and then all of a sudden you know you start getting to do other things and kind of perks of the trade i guess yeah um, dude and, I, and i'm always like 
man, I'm always so honored because, you know, they they could hire whoever, you know, and it's like if they want to bring these weirdos up from Texas, like <laughs> that means that means a lot cuz I'm sure there's a lot of people who are more talented closer. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. Um I mean, uh, you know, things to do, and we'll just get into it real quick if you don't mind. True. Um the anthem of Fort Worth yeah. really. Yeah. Um and do you write that when you were in Lubbock? Because it's, you know, pack, yeah. pack, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I was, I started writing the lyrics the day that my wife and I moved to Lubbock. Like, yeah. um, it was like a rainy day and I was driving a big old U-Haul from Lubbock and it was like, I don't want to sing about the rain or whatever. That was one of the lines. And um, so the full song came out a couple of months later, but it, the main lyric started driving to Fort That's Worth, cool. which was kind of crazy. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're either. good. You're good. Yeah. I was, yeah, I mean, the, um, I mean, internationally, mm-hmm. um, it, it is Put Fort Worth on, on the, the map. map. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you've got the, uh, you know, George Strait, and you got other cuts that, you know, people think about Fort Worth. Um, and I would say, Really and truly, I mean, um, the official song Bang, of of, uh, of Fort Worth, um, because any time that I'm away and that comes up, um, people know that song. So I think that's really cool. Um, what is that even? If you can give us a little bit of what that kind of how that whole thing came to be sure yeah i mean even so when i recorded that uh i didn't even have a full-time bass player in my band so i i self-funded that album we drove down to um a guy that i knew from lubbock that has a studio in kyle texas and um south of austin and i had another buddy from lubbock just come in that lives down there to play bass we recorded that song i I thought it was just going to be like you know, a number eight time filler. Like I didn't think it was really <laughs> yeah. that great, but the that bass player even told me because he sang harmonies on it. He's like, I think this one's yeah something's about this one. Like this is gonna. Be, I was like, okay, man. I, I, I like paid him, and then we haven't talked in a long time. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, dude. And Here's then your money. <laughs> yeah, like um. So then the album came out. Sure enough, like it was like number seven or eight on the album. Um, it was fine. But then we were talking about him earlier, a guy named Tom Martins, yeah. um, which is the creative director for, um, it's now Visitors, uh, Visit Fort Worth. It used to be um, Tourism Board of Fort Worth when he was when it first started. But he, uh, I don't even remember how he heard the song first, but um, he reached out through Instagram. I don't even remember Instagram or email or something, but he just was like, hey, we really like this song. We want to use it on our like video That's for that, cool. like this year summary. Yeah. And um, I was like, man, okay. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that that sounds great. Cause at the time Were you, I'd, I'd have... been playing shows, but like it wasn't like something like it was mainly like song swaps and like acoustic things and like not anything great. And so I was like, man, I'll take all the help I can get. And um, Tom and visit Fort Worth is just like, they they put that song on the map. They've used it in so many things. They've paid us to like re-record it twice. Like so, wow. there's three versions of it now, and um, just the the vision that Tom had for it was like, it, if it wasn't for him, I don't know that it would have ever. I, t- like I tell you is yeah. um, the version y'all did in the UK. Yeah, um, that was fun too. The live, I mean that, yeah. I I. I thought it was pretty cool to have different voices on it representing Fort Worth. Yeah. Um, but I will also say it makes me appreciate hearing it when you sing it. Uh, oh, yeah, dude. Well, I was honored. Like, I felt a little um, awkward because, I mean, it was like Austin Allsup, Joey Green, Abraham Alexander, um, Luke Wade. Yeah. I can't remember if there's somebody else. I feel really bad if somebody, there was somebody else. But it was just like these guys that I'm like, <laughs> they don't even sing in my song, like you know, and so it felt kind of weird. But then they they all like dove in. There was like no ego. They're like, "Well, we should do it like this," and and it ended up being incredible. And people still, as they like, reference it all the time. And um, yeah, it was a really cool moment to be all the way over there. And yeah, in that song. Sick. Yeah, so, I can't even imagine. Yeah. yeah. So 
yeah, I mean, for better or for worse, like I think that song is like that was the one that clicked and um, really, really got us on the map. So your catalog is deep, though. Oh, um, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, my girlfriend and I, um, we throw it on driving in the truck. Uh, you've played for family, friends, uh, their wedding. You've played showers, like all across the board yeah really all different demographics and i think that's something that uh speaks to who you are and what you're putting out hey thanks um it really truly I appreciate that um um there's the song that you said that was resonating with people right now we're about to take a break uh you said grown yep. um do you know what's kind of it's it came out what last year or two years ago mm -hmm. 20, 2022? Uh, the beginning of last year yeah um was that a single you put out or is that something that uh you knew was going to be resonating with people the way it is or like how is that song kind of yeah we we put it out as a single it was part of an album um that we had done with a buddy and um it just has that kind of it, it's it's like you were saying like it's our saying we don't want to be country like yeah. there's nothing country about it like we have like chorus on the guitar um a lot of like weird percussion stuff happening yeah. and like i think maybe there's even some samples in there so it's like um that, that it felt like to the point at that point like our peak creativity yeah and people also liked it Absolutely. so that was because it could because you know you put yourself out there and you're like if people boo you then right. it's like well i guess i gotta go back to bring it back more to the center well i'm gonna well, let's take a break yeah. i'll play it real quick and we'll, we'll uh get back here in just a second cool All right, and we are back with Grady Spencer. Um, thanks again, man. Yeah, for, dude, thank uh, y'all for having me, man. For Absolutely. coming on. It's yeah. been first of all, I like your shoes a lot. I've been, dude, I thank was, you, man. What uh, are you a shoes guy at all? I try. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like I I love like following all the sneaker yeah blogs and stuff, but like I don't like spending the money that much. Me neither. Um, so every now and then, if you know, we have a good show or something. I'll treat myself because like, they've gotten expensive, dude. Like yeah. used to, it was like, you know, 75 to a hundred. You could get a really nice one. Now it's like, you're spending at least a hundred. Yeah. yeah. 150, 200. Dude, it's crazy. Get something nice. There's um, a, a place where I get my shoes or two. Like I'm not, I actually have a, like a skate sh shirt on today. Yeah. I'm not even a skate. I don't skate shoes. I don't skater skate. boy. You were, I saw a clip. You were wearing a, uh, I've I've only seen it once and it was just a, just happy to be here. That's a skate brand. That was uh someone gave me that hat. Yeah, that's a skate <laughs> brand from Fort Worth. I, yeah. I have one, a yeah. gray version, and uh, I was watching those clips. I got dude, man, because I, I love skate. Cool. I love the skate culture. So do but, I. Like, I, I don't do it. I can't do it all yeah. to save my life, but yeah. I do like it. I grew up with like a bunch of like uh, skaters and stuff. Yeah, you know, I was always the kid like with rollerblades, like sure. trying to follow them around. We, and shit like we that. say like uh, Kellen's style game is like how Kirkland became like popular now. <laughs> He's yeah. had it all along. Dude, that's uh, great. I was best somebody, dressed in high school. Yeah, so. somebody even commented, wanted to oh, know yeah, your shoes. shoes. Yeah, those but, are nice. Uh, dude. They're just. I got them at um, Magnolia Skate Shop. I'll yeah. give them a plug. They're uh, they're right off Magnolia Street. Yep. I like getting shoes from there, yep. or like there's a place right next door too that has some pretty cool shoes. Yeah, it's good so. stuff. Yes, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, our my bass player now is like my um, my lighthouse for fashion. Yeah, <laughs> because like he he'll wear stuff. Sometimes I'm like, man, that dude is weird looking but then people tell him all the time <laughs> like, you get oh that? we like your fit yeah you know everybody likes to say we like your fit <laughs> would you get and those so, suspenders yeah dude so like i'll just take like a tiny little bit of like what he's rocking and try to like put it on my I old like man the body what do you got yeah. what's the uh this one's a band called wolf peck okay um out of california and they're like a kind of a funk band yeah really, the dad really hats good. are I love the the dad hats. Yeah, dude, yeah. I, it's 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 great, and that, that's the beauty of like today is just like everybody's wearing such rant like the the spectrum of fashion. It yeah. seems like of like you could dress yourself from Sam's and look yep. really great because yep. <laughs> that's what the kids are doing. They are, you know? yeah. 
Yeah. There's a lot of like pajama pants I've seen in nine like a lot of nineties has come back a Dude, lot. So big. Um, so big. It's wild. Talking about like influences. Mm-hmm. Um you said Jack Johnson was a big one for mm-hmm. you. Uh what when I heard your music for the first time, like it was and I, I know we were like we're not necessarily shitting on country music because like we like country artists sure. as well. Yeah, me too. Uh, and there's a lot of influence as well of, of country music in your in your yeah. art as well. But um, I hear a lot of other things too. I just wanted to see if you would touch on that when you started out or like it's grown from, you know, the first song that you put out till now. Is it stuff that you are listening to and you're just like, I want to implement this? Or is this just like you have an idea in your head? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like even uh, like grown that song that we played a second ago, there's a guy named um, Theo Katzman. He's actually in this band Wolfpack, but he does a solo project too. And when we were recording our latest album, we would go, we'd go listen to his album yeah. that he had just put out. And he was like, well, how did he, how much compression was he putting on the acoustic guitars yeah. and, and things like that? And so there's a guy named Theo Katzman. Uh, there's a band called Bahamas out of Canada. who's a big inspiration. And yeah, I mean, I listen to country every now and then, but it's more, you know, like Charlie Crockett or like, um, you know, kind of the hipster, yeah. you know, Tyler Childers type stuff. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, in the van, a lot of times it's, it's you know, old R&B stuff or like, uh, yeah. you know, just stuff that people probably would never, ever guess hearing me talk because, you know, I'm from West Texas. They automatically assume, oh, you must sure. play country. Sure. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, it. We basically just we're open to do anything, yeah. and that's and that's the beauty of it. Of like how I've been able to like build this band now with the people that are in it. Yeah, super creative dudes. And the beauty of it is, is like for better or for worse, we don't have a label or management to answer to, <laughs> so yeah. we could just no, do whatever great. we could do whatever we want. I think that plays yeah. though yeah, like yes. very well, um, and. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably helped propel you outside of just the Texas market. Um, because I know firsthand what that looks like and what a beating that can be. Sure. Um, and I'm not shitting on it by any means, but the kind of diverse, um, side of your music, um, and different inspirations Mm -hmm. uh, and influences because like I lived out, uh, different States and I've been, different places and it's like you know the whole cliche oh uh, did you ride your horse to school um, when you hear texas and then yeah. now when you bring music into the mix um it's like they almost expect that you're in some sure. lane yeah um whereas with what you're bringing to the table yeah it's it's everything we're talking about uh, from california from the west coast to canada sure uh yeah. to the uk and beyond so from paducah to uh yeah worldwide yeah dude and i think it's like um you know we get we get lumped in and called texas country a lot yeah just because of the venues that i came up in so like sure. the the main place in lubbock when i was coming up was blue light yeah and that's where Pretty will famous. green play that's where you know josh abbott that's where all those guys yeah. played. yeah and so you know moved here the first place that gave me a show was Magnolia Motor Lounge, yeah. which is like, that's where all the Texas country people yep. play. So like just by association of like where I am, people are like, Oh, that's, that's a Texas country band. But then people are like, but you're not country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, well, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like it, it's been, it's been good. And like, rarely is it bad. Like it's just a, it's just a label, but for the most part, um, you know, on Spotify, the like, well, if you like this person, then exactly. you like the, that person. I was going to ask you that. It kind of uh, rolls in together. I was going to ask you because you have, like you said, pockets that you saw like in Atlanta mm-hmm. or, you know, in Georgia or wherever and then Colorado. Are there like similar artists that you are like, okay, these these people are doing well here too? Mm-hmm. You, know, you get what I'm getting at? Like yeah. where, because that, that, that's huge on Spotify. It's, it's a little bit popular on Apple. That's sure. what I listen to. Yeah, me too. But uh it's a lot harder to find new artists, I think, on Apple yeah, and Spotify. It, it definitely is. Yeah. I mean, I've never been a Spotify guy, but it, it definitely seems like it molds better to like what's Absolutely. going on. But yeah, there there's a guy, um, y'all probably even know him, Austin Mead. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean he's he's not country either, but 
he's more rock but it's funny to like watch his tour like we're playing almost the That's exact cool. same venues yeah um and then yeah like we're we're getting to open for flatland cavalry That's great. um for some shows this summer and so we're kind of like riding their coattails he, into like some of yeah. these places and yeah. like um i'm really stoked but then um one of the shows in nebraska um this guy named brent cobb is opening as well and he's yeah. like he's he's like top tier for me and so like i'm so i'm gonna be fanboying out that's awesome, so hard at that one so yeah I, I think it's just looking at what similar people are doing and then um just kind of trusting my booking guy of like saying well i think we should give this a shot yeah. can i ask you happens. apple spotify i think mm -hmm. can i i think the reason why me and tommy are the same way sure reason why we like apple music a little bit better is because the sound quality is mm -hmm better is that why you like it over it is there um, that's for sure my drummer he he okay. he really gets crazy about that um for me it's just like it, it's such an old man thing but it's like it's so easy to lump like my apple tv apple music oh into, yeah, like, yeah. The family I'm with plan you, thing. Like, it's just like one twenty dollar payment or whatever it is yeah. a month um so that's always just been kind of what i do but um yeah I, I like it i i do like um like on apple music they have like the breaking blank uh you know playlists like breaking singer songwriter breaking country sure that's those are really yeah. great if y'all ever looking for new stuff that's how i find a lot of people yeah and i'm sure you know. you're on a bunch of those too it's crazy like i you know now apple music and spotify have become the new radio uh, yeah. yeah where like you come you kind of almost have to hire somebody to yeah. get on like the really big ones yeah it's and it's, uh, it's, it's it's a bummer um but you know, it's just that's just kind of the way the world is is True. flowed. So yeah. uh, it's like I remember in 2014, and I had put out it was my first single I'd put out, and um, I can't stand the song. But <laughs> um, see, this was when radio still had more of a play yeah. than um, you know, getting playlisted and all this um, was really a thing as much. So I got lucky because um, the release day and that was back when it was on fridays um and you know you look at different release days and how it works now it's like it really can go across the board it used to be oh, was it um like tuesdays yeah um yep. and so tuesdays then fridays new music friday um the day that i put it out i guess it was on a tuesday back then and like nobody big yeah. was dropping anything. Yeah. And so what happened was my song got put on the charts. There you go. Yeah. Um, and I beat out like Colt Ford, I remember. <laughs> uh, but like, Good. it was just like, oh, I'm getting in with the big dogs. That's you know? right. Yeah. Uh, and then a day later, I'm nowhere to be found on there. Yeah. Um, but like, you don't really see that happen as much now because of all the money that is put into playlisting yeah. yep. the, I hate to say, but the politics yeah. of who, you know, behind that, uh, we've all seen it happen yep. with yep. different artists and, and some don't, don't, uh, quite stick around, sure. uh, the longevity game of playing that where versus having the organic base yeah. behind you, you can't really compete with. And I think that's, what I respect most about people like yourself, um, you know, guys like, like Cleto, um, mm -hmm. Katie, Will Green, all the people that we've mentioned kind of had that to start with yeah. versus leaning on yeah. this one thing. Yep. Um, so outside of, you know, growing and, and getting, you know, opportunities to go, you know, all over the, the world for that matter, do you see like this, common denominator there of why that is yeah I, I mean i think you nailed it dude like i think um i mean flatland's a great example like i won't speak for them but i do know as a fan they already had the like backlog the of like okay they've put in the work super hard by the time that they got signed to their management deal with, where they're like opening for luke comes now because yeah. like they're like part of um that whole you know umbrella or whatever and so when they did get their opportunity they were already like the the tank was full you know yeah. and so like it, it wasn't like 
oh, we've gotten, we've gotten this shot. We don't have anything to back it up. And then it's just like this big explosion and then they, then they die. Um, so yeah, I think, I think there's a lot to be said for just keeping your head down and like doing, that's what I tell people of like, if people ask my advice, I'm just say, know the things you have control over and the things that you don't have control yep. over and like work super hard, as hard as you can at the things you can't control. Yeah. And then just the other stuff, Try it's super hard because like everything is quantized, like your streams, your yeah. followers, we, your uh, <laughs> view count. You keep know? that serenity prayer going. We try to, yeah, like we have that similarity where at, at this podcast level, like, yeah. you know, we would put out, clips and you know obviously every thursday we have an episode but uh we had a video that went very well and we didn't necessarily know how to handle it if that yeah. makes sense yep but we were just we kept on saying like just be consistent sure just keep on being consistent keep on putting out like a good product yep and i mean that's just that's what you have to do in, in any sense that you're trying to get it to i think anything creative man like i mean like we're all, you know we've all been talking about like Okay, the, the the product is the podcast, but then you have to put it on Instagram. You yeah. have to put it on TikTok. Like, what's the algorithm going to like? Right. What's it not going to like? And right. it's just like, it can drive you crazy. And at a, at a certain point, like, you just have to like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Yep. We're going to do it as hard and as good as we know how to do it. Yeah. And hopefully it resonates. Yeah, especially like when your fan base or however you want, followers, whatever, when they start getting bigger and you start – they start kind of driving the bus a little bit. You're yeah. like, no, 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 no. We, you know, this is the music that we're working on. Yep. This is the, you know, this is what we want to talk about. Dude, on the podcast. it's so, uh, yeah. dude, uh, it's, it's, I've, I've, I've watched it with people. Uh, I know we've all seen it with, with friends. Um, it's, it's hard sometimes for sure. because, um, whether it be the money that's coming with it, the opportunities to stay dialed into what you're doing, uh, because there are those days where everything's going wrong. Yep. Um, and you know, um, being out on the road, um, the way that I was roughing it, um, I believe is, is, you know, without a, a 40 person crew and you've got a four or five person crew. Yeah. I mean, it can get exhausting. Yeah. Um, and having that at, all times to kind of anchor you yeah of like we're doing it yep um it, it can be tough it For can sure. be tough but when you remember you know <laughs> your why as they say um and then when it's your career yep you know it doesn't matter if uh you're not feeling it that day for yeah. sure you're doing it dude and that and that's why i tell people of like it gets it can get real corny and deep real quick but it's just like You've got to find, you've got to find your identity in something other than your job or your performance. Because yeah. if if it all falls apart yeah. and like people <laughs> stop streaming your stuff or like yeah. people stop watching, if you don't have some sort of basis in something outside of this, yeah. then, then that's when people just like go off the deep end. Right. Tell me, was talking started. about like um, kind of like being on tour with you know four or five people or whatever. Yeah. I want to talk about, well, first of all, you know, it's Grady Spencer, but it's Grady Spencer and the work, mm -hmm. right? So you were kind of talking about it a little bit earlier about your creative process and how you guys work together. Yeah. Um, what does that look like? Like if you were going to, do you have like a studio or do you, you guys get together and you're like, okay, let's work on a new song. How does that process work with you guys? Yeah, usually um, the the line i mean it's kind of evolved over the years i mean for the most part early on it was like i'm writing the songs i already have an idea of what yeah. i want to do arrangement wise and we take it from there now with the group of guys that i have is i'll demo out a song with just me and an acoustic guitar sometimes if i have a really strong idea with something i'll try to put it together but then bring it to the guys um email it to them and then they kind of all work on their own and then we'll get together at a rehearsal space and like kind of start trying stuff out. And, um, it's, it's kind of a blast because, you know, musically I'm the dumbest guy in the band. <laughs> like I got a band full of like really smart, talented dudes. And so, um, they kind of take the little seed that I give them and yeah. we kind of grow it together. Yeah, and, it can be intimidating when, uh, when me and Tommy were doing uh, music together, like, 
I felt in the same boat as you. Just yeah. like I thought I was the dumbest. No, <laughs> man, I just I just was hitting stuff. Right, sure. I'm the drummer, so yeah. I'm just like over there, like, and uh, it can be intimidating. But yeah. at the same time, like having even different uh, musical intelligence levels. Sure. Like sometimes dumbing it down is the yep. right way to go. Sometimes stripping stuff away is yep. the right way to go. I think and like then, yeah, we found it was like I mean, and we touched on it earlier, but like giving references sometimes if yep. like you know whether it's a certain vibe we want to push on this track or what yeah. whatever it is it's easy to say uh this way versus you know trying to get so technical sometimes yeah. like gets in the way um so on the flip side having technology yep. yeah. having the tech side of sure. this yes. yeah um, you know, and you touched on it is you're able to just through a file basically share yep. demos. Um, so it plays to a strength, uh, also. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I think the older I get, like the, in my younger days, it, I had probably an unhealthy amount of ego of like, no, I, I want it to be my idea. I want sure. it to be my song. And I think now as now this is kind of my business, like this is how I'm doing it. Yeah. Like, um, it's better for everyone for me to let go of a lot of that and like know that the the value I'm bringing is probably the song yeah and then trust the guys and like we all just kind of listen to each other and like um it's it's really it's really refreshing and it's something I'm still working on every day to how like, many you know. what's the core group like it's you obviously yeah and... there's me and three guys okay yeah and so lately um we've been running uh it's called Ableton which is like yep. this program and so like Johnny, the bass player, is a really talented keys player. And so, like, we don't have room in the van for a keys guy. And so, like, he'll we would record those, and then um, that kind of plays um, through the through the main. So, like, he's playing both. Yeah. Like, Ableton, so. for those of you who don't know, Ableton is like a, you, it's a live performance. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You can use it to record as well, obviously, but mm -hmm. it's to – go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, no, I just remember the first time because for a while, um, you know, it was – I don't want to say frowned upon. Sure. Um, I think it was more jealousy. I think people were jealous that like they didn't have the capabilities to incorporate some of this into yeah. their live show. And now I don't know many people that don't have some yeah. type of <laughs> yeah uh, track game going. But uh, I'll tell you, as I remember the first time I was opening for somebody and they were doing their sound check. And I was solo acoustic opening sure. for them. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I'm really like, this yeah. is not even in the same playing field. Yeah. Um, it's a strength. Um, and really, that's the way I view it. For sure. Um, is because you look at, um, you know, like you said, you can't really fit a keys guy in, yeah. in the van. Yep. Um, I know plenty of bands in that same situation. Yeah, but you still want to produce the live show and and be able to bring that that sound to your show. Yeah, and it's for the most part like the the majority of the stuff that we do is you know percussion keys. It's it's not like I did learn the lesson the hard way though. There was a trip, my lead guy couldn't make it, and we were like, well, I guess we'll try it because we had we'd been recording all of our sets. Yeah. And so we put him in there, and uh, one guy got on Facebook, and he was pretty upset. He, <laughs> he, he thought he thought we were like nobody was playing. On really? Stage. Just because like, the computer? Like, no, 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 no. Well, he was just like, well, I I felt weird about it. So on stage, I said, full transparency, <laughs> our lead player had something come up with his family. He couldn't make the, the trip, so you're hearing him. It's at a live show. He's just not here. You're right. That guy didn't get it. I don't know if he was drunk <laughs> or what, but man, he went on Facebook and he ripped. And then I, I like commented back. I'm like, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I was trying to take the high road. I was like, yeah. that's not what I said. Cause he was like, these guys weren't even plugged in. Yeah, Your guitar wasn't it. even hooked up and like all this. I was like, no, no, everything was real. Like, I was like, I'll even send your money back or whatever. And he just like, he never said anything. Never else. Said anything. So, that's how it it's, goes. It's but, wild how people react sometimes oh, to yeah. that. But I, I think I, I think I'm probably not going to put guitar solos in there anymore because like, it, it's just like, it's too much. But for the most part, like you said, like, 
we've we've gotten to the point where people are paying it's not just five dollar covers anymore like sometimes it's 25 yeah. 30 40 dollars a ticket i want these people to leave the show feeling like whoa that was yeah that was good like yeah. i didn't want them to feel like oh that was lame or lackluster or something so like i want to give them their money's worth and and luckily, you know, I think we try and do it tastefully and not like in your face. Oh, I've seen it yeah. gone wrong. Oh, dude, it does happen. For yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm trying to minimize. Uh, but uh, part of that is just like um, like anything yeah. when you lean too much into one thing. Yep. And you can have some technical difficulties. Uh, then you're kind of sitting there scratching your head. You're not that kind of band. Uh, yeah. At yeah. all. So. Um, it, it, you do bring that experience, um, sure. that you would hear on a record, uh, which I would say in, in a lot of credit to when you are going out to these new markets, the next time you go there, you're getting more and more people on sure. board. Um, yeah. so that, that rocks, uh, for sure. I think a lot of sound guys outside of people who know us, they get really annoyed cause like they don't they don't get it or something yeah so it's like it's hard to like walk them through like no 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 it's just like just pretend it's a keyboard guy <laughs> it's just not here like just plug this in this just hole but have a mannequin that exactly. with you we've we've made jokes like that. just like <laughs> just like dress people up but, yeah yeah uh we gotta take another break uh yeah. we're gonna play another song uh so this is from the album same album wait uh it's called find you is there anything you want to tell me about this before we, we play it at yeah, all? Yeah, it's a song about meeting my wife, finding my wife. And um yeah, I think it's just uh it's just a good song, good love song. Nice. We love yeah. good love songs. Yeah. Here it is. Uh we'll see you right back after this break. for sticking with us i got grady spencer with us today um uh, man it's been fun yeah dude thank y'all for having it's me to, uh, it has been fun deep dive uh and ask some questions that yeah. uh normally you know things you don't always know about uh people that you look up to and listen to so appreciate that um you know we did a bit recently um and being on the road i thought this kind of paired well uh about bucky's Mm -hmm. um the texas staple i think it's yep. that like for me what some people treasure um because they're not out and about on the road long trips as often so things that some people treasure just really got to be um anxiety ridden yeah. um like bucky's for example the whole experience some people love it yep. um for us it's like um not a great situation anymore. <laughs> yeah. What? How do you? Here's. I actually got a question. So, first of all, overrated, underrated, Bucky's. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's at this point overrated. Yeah. I think at at a certain point in my career, when we were first getting the yeah. road, it was underrated. It was like, oh, look at all these choices. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the hot food is always mediocre at best. Yeah. Like yes. the hot food's never good. And the then rollers. yeah, yeah, dude, it's just like getting in and out of there is crazy. Yeah, you're um, probably the same as me. Like, and obviously when you're touring, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question about that in a second. But uh, I hate like when I go on road trips with people. I hate stop. I'm just yeah. ready to get to yep. the spot. <laughs> but I want to ask you like uh, gas stations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If you're touring, is it usually like in a van or yeah? Okay, yeah, a van. What uh. What's like the prime gas station? Like, is it a quick trip or like, what's your like, oh, we got to like, or fast food place mm -hmm. that you stop. You're just like, all right. 
Yeah, you, it usually depends on, like, how hard of a schedule we're trying to keep. Like, if, if we're leaving early in the morning and we're driving eight hours to load in that afternoon, yeah, like, we, we got to be snappy. And so that's usually, like, a pilot or, like, a, um, a Love's. Cause yes. usually yeah, they have love like, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Love's love is pretty loves. good because, like, they have good snacks. They usually either have, like, a Subway yep. or an Arby's uh, attached at the hip. And so... Anybody can, if you want food, you can get food. If you want snacks, they got snacks. Yep. You know, the bathrooms are always usually pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty Sometimes decent. Sometimes they got those truck driver, like, showers. Yeah. Dude, yeah. You really need them. Oh, man. Dude, we were, yeah. You get the so, lot lizards crawling. Oh, yeah. dude, you see those too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my wife always says, like, you steer clear of those <laughs> young ladies. And so. You're like, don't worry about it. Yeah. So usually, <laughs> yeah, like a, like a loves is top notch. Uh, a QT is is high up there, but yeah. you don't see you know outside of Texas you don't see a lot of them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, usually the loves is like that's that's primo. That's dope. That's um, good. So we do a game. We're gonna do it next episode too, but I might tease some with you for this one. It's uh, we do agree or disagree. Okay. And so uh, I give you like a prompt, like a statement. You either tell me uh, gold star if you agree with it yeah. or see me after class if you want you know you want to disagree with it okay and i, I don't think tommy knows these ones either um uh, but so we'll just start off with uh it says slasher movies are tasteless and the lowest form of entertainment those are like the screams those are like your horror movies like that uh i think uh see me after your class just because there's so much stuff on yeah Social media that's way lower than <laughs> yeah, that, true. dude. Like, that's like true. lip yeah. sync dance videos. Yeah, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> dude, I'm with you. I uh, I actually like slasher movies. Yeah. I think they're fun. They're like they're in the same vein of like the Fast and Furious movies, For where sure. they're like so bad they're good. Yeah, yeah. and so I like. Uh, there's a time and place. There's I, a time and place. I, I, and it's usually Halloween. Yeah, but I I like them. We uh, expect like the Halloween movies. Yeah, so they're getting worse and worse, but. I, I like those kinds of movies. Yeah. I, I give it, I, I disagree as well. I, yeah. I'm going to see you after class. What, Tommy, sure. you got? Yeah. Um, I'm going to board the same train as y'all because, um, Grady, you nailed it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the difference between even 10 years ago versus today, um, yeah, our, our entertainment standards have, have really changed, yeah. um, yeah. with social media. So, we say that, but well, we, we just to, did different stuff. I tell you, like, um, I mean, even through high school, like the whole jackass era. Oh yeah, like that yeah, really very hit. Very popular for us. That hit for me. For sure. Uh, <laughs> we always wanted to be featured on those. Like those we used to do the stupidest stuff. Yeah, just reenacting basically. How old are you, by the way? If I'm you don't, 30, want... yeah, I'm thirty eight. Thirty eight. How old yes. are y'all? We're thirty two. Yeah. So we're like, jackass was like a staple. Yep. It was yep. right there. And then you had I like remember. the Bam Largera mm -hmm. and the, all those guys. All right, I got another one. Um, let's see. All right, so this is kind of a little bit more nostalgia too. Uh, I don't even know if this makes sense. I might have to just say it to you, but we should bring back 90s commercials. Like oh, the overhype. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, gold star. Yeah, gold star. Gold star. I'm thinking like in terms of, remember watching Nickelodeon back yep. in the day and they have like, the slime or they'd have mm -hmm. all this like crazy shit they want you to buy and you, I would almost pull the trigger on it just from yeah. the commercial alone. You know the, what I mean? The band, uh, me and the guys in the band have, um, an Instagram group chat going on. I don't even know what to call it. I'm so old, but <laughs> it's good. like, it's in the DMS, but yeah. it's like, it's a group chat and it's just where we share like a funny memes yeah. and stuff. And, and it's really entertaining, but, uh, the bass player follows all these accounts that like, Meme counts. Yeah, I think yeah. it's like Neon Talk or something, and then like only 90s kids or something. But he'll share commercials. Yes. And it just explodes the chat. It's <laughs> just like, this rule. Like, we were so, awesome. They were so yeah. good at marketing back then. Yeah, like, they were. They would scream at you. I remember, I like, I, I, you know, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney, whatever. But those commercials, like, I'd be watching Legends of the Hidden Temple yeah. or whatever show oh, yeah. would be on. Dude, so good. And then, like, uh, a scholastic news would come mm -hmm. on or like just to buy some something i'd be like damn i need to go talk to my parents about it because they'd <laughs> yeah even say it they'd be like go get your mom right yeah. now yeah <laughs> and, and so you'd, you'd listen yeah, yeah i'd listen dude. to them 
now it's just jams. like uh, you got fl- progressive and yeah. flow and all yeah. these people. You're just like, I don't want to listen to you. Yeah. All right. Here's uh, this is the last agree or disagree I have, but I'm you know, if you have one or something you want to ask us, that's sure. cool too. Uh, scramble eggs are the best way to make an egg. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say, see me after class on that one. Okay, tell Dude. me what do you think. Mm. I do love some scrambled eggs. Um, yeah, that's tough. Um, I think for. Yeah, I'll say Gold Star. Okay. But I can understand why. Same here. I'm going to say Gold Star too. Sure. I want to hear what are you, are you a over easy guy or what? Yeah, so for me the, what what my mind goes to is I eat a lot of Asian food yes. and they put a lot of eggs uh, on stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh a good semi runny egg on some like that rice so or stuff is like really good my wife thinks it's the most disgusting <laughs> yeah <laughs> like she'll look at it and like she can't even look at i'm food with you sometimes. on that i'm i'm from a from. from a breakfast standpoint yeah breakfast is scrambled is really good yeah sure. is so, but is breakfast the most important meal of the day not anymore i don't even wake up for breakfast i don't even do eat you breakfast. eat i don't eat breakfast yeah so. i drink coffee that's it i get exactly. i get uh yeah I get some remarks uh from from b about that about not eating breakfast yeah. but I didn't grow, dude. I didn't I, either. I, I tell you, yeah. uh, growing up, it was like my mom would give us peanut butter and syrup. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And dude. send us off to school. Yep. What was a game changer for me was those cereal bars. Oh, yeah. You yeah. remember those? those like it'd good. be like a Captain or a Cinnamon Toast Crunch like <laughs> bar. Yeah. And you would just eat that. Because uh, I would never wake up early enough to yeah. do that know. kind of stuff. But um, what's some Asian restaurants that you like around here? Because I'm, I'm a. There's a, I'll give you one. Uh, sure. Have you ever heard of Over Here? It's like a, uh uh-uh. uh, where's that? It's over off Magnolia. So okay. I used to live over in that area. Yeah. Um, they started off as a food truck and now there's like a little, uh, cafeteria that ha- shares with three other places. Oh, dude, I have eaten there. Yes. Yes, okay. dude. Yeah. That's good. That place. Yeah. That, they have the egg on there. They have the hot chicken in there yep. too as well. The tea place. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I know exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's you good. Need, I love that place. Yeah. I like uh, that place too. That, that's uh that's like a staple in our house. We just yeah we'll go yeah there. that runny egg is fire there. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> is, dude. And um, a lot of ramen too. Yeah, the ramen's good. Yeah, um, the ramen oh, I just went blank. Um, that's over there by it on Eighth. Okay. I can't think of it. It's is upstairs. it the one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't think of the name of it either. But it's yes, that's uh, a really cool spot. That's a cool spot. It's delicious. Tokyo Cafe um, on Camp Bui is really good. Yeah. Um, Dude, I, I, I'm a big, we like Asian food. Dude, I, I love it. My wife calls it slimy food. Like, she'll <laughs> eat, like, fried rice, but, like, she wants me to go eat the weird stuff when yeah. she's, like, out of pocket. Dude, <laughs> so, I love that kind yeah, of stuff. It's good. Um, You got any degree, disagree, agree? Oh, man. Um, we, we, uh, we're going to talk about it, like, on the next episode, but I want to hear, like, some, uh, like, what you think about, uh, like when somebody has to cancel last minute mm-hmm. shows wise? <laughs> yeah, I was shows gonna, wise. We, show wise, like yeah. uh, when's when should you tell? Like if you, for example, if your voice was not up there, or mm-hmm. like let's, you know, allegedly too drunk. Sure. Oh, I know. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. We, we kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, I got <laughs> it. I know. I know what's up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Uh, what do you? What is your like standpoint on that? What do you think that like? Oh, dude, I think it's um. I think in that particular situation, I think that was too late. I think he, I think that should have been a lot earlier. Um, for me, I've had, I have had to cancel shows. Yeah. Um, f- funny story. The show we're playing in two, uh, a couple of days in uh, Pittsburgh is a COVID reschedule that I caught. Really? I, I, we were on a run. We played in Cincinnati um, and I was feeling kind of wonky, a little weird. Yeah. The show, the next day I woke up. Didn't have a voice at all. Long story short, I had COVID. So we had to cancel the rest of the run. Wow. And so that in that case, like I want to tell people as quick as I can. Yeah. Because like yeah. I want them, if they had, you know, as old man as it sounds like, if they had babysitters yeah, or absolutely. like whatever, like they absolutely. can like cancel and save their money. Respectable. But, yeah. yeah. I think um, as far as like party boy stuff goes, like <laughs> um, I think – I've heard horror stories about artists trying to perform too drunk and uh, contractually, if they do that, they don't, 
they don't have to refund people's money. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I would almost them, even if it is last minute cancel so people can get their money back. Yeah. It's, um, uh, yeah. I, man, it's, I, it's, it's pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, I, fuck, I'm guilty. Yeah. Um, oh, we all have. I've, have. I've yeah. been, I've been. Sometimes walk- when you get nervous, you just want to get a little bit, you know, liquid courage, obviously. So, yeah, dude, I, I learned the hard way. I mean, growing up in Lubbock, playing the blue light, let me sing things called the Apple Burns. Uh, y'all ever, you ever been to Blue Light? Um, Blue Light? I know I've, of the Blue Light. I yeah. know it's like yeah. very popular. I've never been out to Lubbock, so they have yeah. like a trademark um, liquor, and it's like habanero vodka. Wow, I think it's vodka. Yeah, and uh, they mix it with apple something, snobs yeah. maybe or something. Dangerous, delicious. Uh, it sounds <laughs> and, really uh, good, it sounds dude. Like in the head. early days, like I remember, I had two to seven too many, and it was like. I should not have done that. Yeah. So I've learned my lesson, especially I've, now. Like the, I'm trying to do this as a job. Like I usually don't try to drink before sure. a show. Like after I might treat myself to a little something. But yeah, it's um, more of a it changes. Uh, is, yeah. is okay. So I, I just unlocked a memory for me. But um, calf fry. Yep. Oklahoma, uh, Stillwater, years and years ago. Um, it was side stage, not a big deal, but I got thrown on there last minute Yeah, um, to kick things off, and I was so nervous, and all my buddies, like, the first thought was, like, they went and got me a bottle of whiskey, uh, you know, some extracurriculars. Loosen up your yeah. voice a little and, bit. And, and not knowing that, they had my, told my parents, so my parents drove from Fort Worth oh, all the way to Stillwater man. to see me, and by the time I oh, was no. playing... Um, yeah, not good. Yeah. Um, especially when you know you've got big names coming behind you, yeah. and then you're backstage just being an Sloshed. idiot. Thankfully, they all thought I was funny backstage, yeah. so I didn't burn good. bridges. Yeah, but um, then some years later, I certainly did. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was what used to be Capital Bar uh, oh, yeah. here locally. Yeah, and I learned the hard way what that looks like walking yeah. off stage. Yeah, too and drunk. They- a lot of these venues and drinking goes hand in hand. Like, sure. you know, there sometimes that's just like, hey, do you want to drink before you go on? But or hey, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though is there's the difference of like the early days of like the pressure, and uh, not that there's not always some level of pressure, but then when it's no longer your first rodeo, so to speak, and it's your business, that's where I, I personally get get uh, a little frustrated oh yeah especially watching it play out and you're sure. like hey man like yeah and I, th- I think i get it though too because like you you reach a certain point in your career of like now all of a sudden people you have a rider yeah and like if you're having if you've had a bad day and you're stressed yep. and tired you've been <laughs> on the road and you have somebody that says we'll get you a ball or whatever or here's all the drinks you can want yeah. It's super easy to be like, oh man, this is just, you know, you can't even keep track and then you do it. Yeah. Um, and, and I've been on that path too. And so like, I, I just try for me, I try when I'm on the road, especially on runs, like try and keep it at a minimum as much right. as I can. I let the guys, I live vicariously through the dudes like, <laughs> I'll, cause they, they, they play really well no matter That's what great. they're doing. So I'm like, just like shoving it's, it in there. It's, it's hard to do when it's you, like you're up there. You're, yeah. I mean, you're kind of the, you're obviously the face of the yeah. So it's like, you kind of have to have your shit together a little bit. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I've, I've heard stories of, you know, if it's like the name and, the, and then the band of like, oh, did you hear the name was so <laughs> drunk and like, I didn't remember the songs and like, I'm getting older. So like, it's hard for me to remember anyway. So it's like, right. Yeah. I gotta, gotta keep it, gotta keep it tight. Yeah. Uh, even sober, I'm guilty of yeah, dropping dude. lyrics and songs. Yeah. Be like, yes. fuck. If people are like, you wrote that, how do you forget? I'm yeah. like, cause when you write that many songs too. Yeah. Like, dude, have so you ever hard. seen that Lil Wayne? Uh, I don't know if it's an interview or what. It's this like guy interviewing him, telling him like, he's like telling him a lyric. He's like, damn, that is so good. He's like, you wrote that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I wrote that. I, I wrote that? that. Yeah. He's like, he's like, man, that's fire. Yeah, dude, his clips are hilarious, yeah. man. I love those. He, uh, yeah. but okay, I wanted to ask you this. So we've had like comedians on uh-huh. and we've kind of asked them like some heckle stories. Yeah. And, you know, just being in music, like, there's people you like the Facebook guy. There's always yeah. going to be somebody out there. Sure. Is there one that's either like stuck with you or what? Mm-hmm. Like maybe one of the first ones where you're like, I'm not, I'm never playing live music ever again. Um. Yeah. For the most part, I always try to like 
especially now because like I don't have a team doing social media stuff, so people can yeah. get a hold of me relatively easy. And like, it, without fail, someone will DM me and say, "Hey, this is so and so's birthday. We're bringing we're bringing these people. It would mean the world if you would just give them a shout out or say happy birthday." Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and for years, I'm just like, "Yeah, dude. Yeah, this means okay, cool. Like these people are coming on their birthday." <laughs> I always do it. No one, they're never there. Really? They're never there. So now when people are like, could you say happy birthday? I'm like, nope. Like, I'm not. Come to the merch table. I'll tell them happy birthday face to face. But like, I, I would go out on a limb and like try to make it like this big deal, make these people feel special. And then yeah. everyone's just like looking around. There's like nobody. I keeps, guess they had yeah. things to do. Yeah. Look at that. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, for the most part, like you always have the, uh, the drunk people yelling stuff, but I think I've, yeah, I just kind of like roll with it. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I've never had anybody that scathing. I think that's the difference from music is just like you just start playing and you drown Can't them out. Can't hear them, right. Comedians, like you're, you're in it with when them. When I asked, so. So, so, when yeah. I was talking to you about it, you were like, no. Well, because Kellen said to the comedian, he was like, you know, in music, we don't get heckled. And As I was much, like, I mean, uh, like yeah. when you're standing in between songs and you're, you're in front this stage. This sucks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can hear things come For through sure. uh, the, the crevices between the, the crowd noise. So. Oh, dude. Well, we, we have, because um, we run ears now. Yeah, uh, in ear monitors, and so we've got two mics that we'll put at the front of the stage to like it helps kind of make it not sound so sterile. Yeah, yeah. But at the big shows, dude, if it's like I heard this dude trying to hook up with this girl <laughs> the whole show, <laughs> yeah. and it was like it, they don't realize it, but like I'm hearing it all, and like we record a, a lot That's of our so sets, awesome. and so like we go back and listen to it, and he, this dude was just striking out constantly. <laughs> Like, it was going right to my brain, and uh, it was hilarious. Is that going to be on the live uh, dude, album you got? Um, yeah. yeah. Can dude, we that, bump the volume on this track? I, I was trying to find, like, little nuggets, and, like, I wish we would had more time to, like, go pick through all the crowd mic stuff. But That'd be fun. Yeah. fun. Just listen to all that. Like, dude, it's hilarious, dude. Yeah, because, like, especially when we record, like, I'll record. I'll hit record just so I won't forget like 30 minutes before the set. Yeah. And then I'll forget about it till like 30 minutes after. So like you, you hear those. all kinds of little nuggets in there. It's it's really funny. Damn. It might be illegal actually. I don't know that I'm recording <laughs> Depends people without on what their state. knowledge. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't publicize I don't know. that too like, much. That's so. a good question. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. We'll strike that. He, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, that's allegedly. It's all right. He doesn't yeah, actually. Allegedly. It's something I think about. Yeah. yeah. That's funny, dude. I, um, what, you got something? Uh, no, I was just going to say the, the whole, like, sometimes I would put my phone up and oh, yeah, do the voice memo thing. And I too have captured some interesting conversations yeah. and it's like, you don't even realize it. And then two weeks later you're driving and you throw it on and you're like, what the, what the hell yeah, are they talking about? What is this? It's like getting those voicemails you're not supposed to get. Yeah. yeah. It's the best. We've talked about that. The, the butt dial voicemail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways. Well, I tell you what, this is going to be coming out uh, directly this next week. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have any dates you want to plug. Yeah, we're going to, the biggest thing um, this coming week is, I guess, the day after Thursday on Friday, um, the first single from the live album, uh, Live from Tannehill Tavern, uh, will be coming out, and our YouTube for the full concert film will be coming out. That's awesome. It'll be out on YouTube. Um, so, we'll put it in the description, like, yeah, of the episode. Awesome. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you. Yeah, it, um, it, I, I hired some people to do the filming, and then I thought, oh, I can just edit it myself, and I... I realized that was a much bigger task than it yeah. was, but I finally got it done. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would. He does but, the editing. I've tried to do it, and it's just yeah. it's like a it's like learning something that you dude. It's stuff so hard. This was like a six camera thing, so like each song had six different angles. Wow. And we finally got it through, and and um, I'm I'm super proud of it. So yeah, hopefully hopefully people will enjoy it. Yeah, looking dude, forward to it. So Friday. So when this comes, have you listened to this on Thursday when this comes out? Friday, come back. If you've already listened to it after, it's already out. So yeah. go check it out for us. Yeah, the full album, the full Life from Tannehill album will be on Spotify, Apple Music on May 19th. So whenever you're listening, there'll be content nice. for you. And uh, our Corpus Christi stands out there, all of our Hooks fans. Uh, oh, looks I like you're going to be uh, yeah. Brewster Street, yeah. May 25th. Yep, the end of the month. Yep. Um, and it's then, our first time. I've never played there before, so I'm excited. That'll be That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm pumped. Um. Well, I'm gonna. I do want to give uh, yeah, the Windy City smoke out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
That's huge. Yeah. Um, so that's July 15th. Yeah. Super pumped um, so on that. So if you're in Chicago, um, I mean, Luke Bryan, Cameron Marlowe, um, to see your name on there, uh, hell, I'm, I'm proud. Dude, thank you, man. That's yeah, awesome. that was another Visit Fort Worth little thing. And um, they they threw my name out there, and the festival was like, sure. And so, that's awesome. Yeah, man, we're, um, we're super pumped. And, um, yeah, no no drinking for me on that day. <laughs> yeah. Nice Suit and tight. And tie. Yeah. All right, well, this has been the Post Hump Day podcast with Grady Spencer. Uh, I'm Kellen King. Tom and DeSalt, thanks again. I'm going to play Feeling Fine. Does that work for you? Sounds great. It's at Post Hump Day. Find us on social media. Look up Grady Spencer. At GS and the work. There you go. This song I sing.